Look, hundred years at the hundred years, they done lied to us about this and that. Told us all we from Africa and made fiction characters turn into facts. Harry Tubman then it was not. No goddamn well that trick was capped. My wife and I wrote a book about it, and it's book with knowledge, evidence, and fact. My other book got them haters shook, cause it's helping my people take a closer look. Had their backgrounds in the background, show my people where they post a look. Show my people where they get it from, where they hit it from, all sorts of angles. When it comes to this research, you must please first don't trust strangers. Find out not all of your own is what I highly recommend and suggest. And if you're looking for uncensored content by me, I highly recommend you the best. Which is my website at the link you see just across the screen. Don't let it miss you. I make it simple. I double down on that black and white. It's too official. If something can be connected, it will be connected in the 5G world. The 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. But this 5G revolution may have a dark side. Autonomous vehicles, smart city energy grids, transportation networks, and water systems. Hundreds of billions of microchips. <laughs> Hundreds of billions of microchips. Wireless radiation has biological effects. Published, peer-reviewed science already shows that today's technology creates radio frequencies that pose a threat to both the human body and to animals, not to mention to the environment. The 5G revolution will touch all corners of our country. 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 These existing health effects of wireless radiation are worthy of attention because in order for 5G to work efficiently, cell towers will need to be installed everywhere. That's why over 200 doctors and scientists worldwide are now cautioning that we need research on the health effects of 5G before its rollout. Let's consider that the brain tumors, infertility, memory loss, nausea, neurological disorders, and anxiety may not even be the worst 5G has to offer. Because with 5G also comes the potential to turn every device into a way for the state to spy on you. In today's society of America, technology has become big business due to the heavy influence of social media, social marketing, and social engineering. And millions of people all over the country have since progressed over time as being the victimized consumers. Over the years, it has become more common for the average American to own a smart device due to how technology is advancing almost every three months now. So things like your typical refrigerator that would just normally act as a storage unit for your food has evolved into being a computer that stores your food, tells you today's forecast, allows you to surf the web, and even conveniently alerts you whenever a particular item in your fridge needs to be replenished. And this all sounds good and very utilitarian, I might add, but have we ever thought about where the line should be drawn here? Question everything. Like, who gets to determine how far technology goes in the first place? Are there no limits? Question everything. Like, what is the actual overall goal of advanced technology anyway? Is it to make the human being less dependent or as lazy as possible? Questioning everything sparks an internal dialogue within one's mindset, allowing for the individual to become skeptical of all information presented. It will also assist with differentiating the truth 
from a commonly known opinionated fact. This is why a fact can be easily checked and the truth is way more difficult to find. Now, there are many truths that lay dormant behind the original meaning of words, especially when it comes to the English language and being cognizant of the history of the words you speak is a very essential key factor when you are progressing in perpetual divine oneness. In most cases, you would discover that particular words that you would commonly use in a benevolent fashion actually carries a negative, non-connotative definition, or rather, its primary meaning is used in a malevolent sense. For example, everyone can relate to using the word nice as a formal compliment normally, but it turns out that its original definition associates the word nice as being, quote, foolish, ignorant, frivolous, and senseless. Now, even though its definition changed around the early 1800s, who's to say what a person's actual intentions are when using this word? The point of me bringing this to your attention correlates with the original question of this segment, which is, why are they called smart devices? The original definition of the word smart as an adjective associates it as meaning, quote, painful, severe, stinging, causing a sharp pain. And using the word smart as a verb meant, quote, to be painful, to pain, to bite, to rub away, and to harm. So with that in mind, even though we know that its definition has since been changed by some mysterious persons, could it be possible that smart devices are actually harmful? Well, nowadays, we have even more technology on the rise. And for the most part, people would tend to gravitate towards its simplistic functionalities and cool new features more so than some safety concerns that a few of us may have pointed out publicly already. Remember that old saying, a hard head makes a soft behind? Let's take the new 5th gen networks for example, or rather those 5G networks that everyone is hearing about commercially, and how they are being campaigned as if it's the best new thing since sliced bread. The 5G network is said to be more than 100 times faster than the 4th gen network, in which 4G is just limited to using frequencies directed from a single cell tower towards, let's say, your smartphone that's within a 10 to 20 mile radius of that cell tower, and then transmute that same frequency back to that single cell tower. So, the further you move away from that initial cell tower, your signal weakens until you are in the range of another cell tower in a different location. 5G eliminates that process by nearly quadrupling the amount of cell towers that also works alongside much smaller cell towers additionally, allowing the frequencies to work more proficient and uninterrupted. However, having all of these frequencies working all at once comes with a hefty price tag, and I am not referring to how much your internet service provider would charge you, nor how much the installation would cost them. With more frequency waves being admitted, whether higher or lower, comes even more radiation, much, much more radiation to a point where scientists, doctors, activists, physicians, and even professors in the medical field have publicly stated their concerns with this 5G network and its immediate health hazards towards any living being. For example, a public health professor at the University of California 
named Dr. Joel Moskowitz stated, quote, the deployment of 5G or fifth generation cellular technology constitutes a massive experiment on the health of all species because millimeter waves are weaker than microwaves. They are predominantly absorbed by the skin, meaning their distribution is quite focused there. Since skin contains capillaries and nerve endings, millimeter waves bioeffects may be transmitted through molecular mechanisms by the skin or through the nervous system." End quote. Then he also said that the millimeter waves that 5G will emit will directly affect the eyes, testes, skin, sweat glands, and the nervous system. Now, what's very important to note here is that the 5G millimeter waves are limited to even shorter lengths than of the 4G network. But to compensate for that, the 5G infrastructure is calling for 10 times the amount of many cell towers that will be placed even closer to office buildings, schools, hospitals, and especially our homes making the rate of being exposed to RF radiation even higher. Kevin Modis, who is the president of the U.S. Brain Tumor Association, said that, quote, within the radio frequency portion of the electromagnetic spectrum, the higher the frequency, the more dangerous the radiation is, end quote. Studies have shown that being exposed to these types of radio waves or radio frequencies, whether high or low, can cause brain damage, cancer, and even affect an infant's DNA structure tremendously. Now, the good news is there is a fight to stop this systematic installation of the 5G network and the FCC, or the Federal Communications Commission, is fully aware of the public's concerns. But so far, it just delayed the process of installation. And I am doing my part by making you aware of what's going on. Spread the word, people. So now, which definition of the word smart correlates with their intentions? Wait, before you answer that, Let's go over another alarming concern in regards to these smart devices. Most of you are aware that when you are utilizing, let's say, your smartphone, for example, that your direct location is being recorded, even if you have your locator off on your device. You can actually check this for yourself by just simply having your locator off and type in google.com in your web browser, for example and scroll all the way down to the bottom of that initial page and you'll see what I mean. The reason why this is happening is due to your MAC address or your IP address that is automatically assigned to your specific internet service. This is also how those ads that you may see anywhere you surf the web is being catered to you based on your location and your browsing activity. Yeah, that gets recorded too. Oh, and let's not forget about how you just had a conversation with your friend about possibly buying some new item you wanted or needed. And then not long after that, you'll see an ad for that particular item pop up all of a sudden while you're surfing the web. That's because your conversations are also being softly recorded by your smartphone or any other smart device that has a built-in microphone for that matter. Now, you're probably asking, is this even legal? Yes and no, but more so yes, due to you nonchalantly agreeing and accepting the terms of service and privacy policies of free websites like Facebook and Google and free applications like Instagram and Twitter, and even those viral face manipulation apps that people download on their smart devices. 
If you didn't know this, be sure to make it a habit to read the privacy policies and even the permissions that you literally give them inadvertently. Now, with all of that being said, the alternative to combat these smart device privacy issues is a service called VPN, which is an acronym for Virtual Private Network. Having a VPN can allow its users to surf the internet privately, safely, and more secure. In more broader terms, having a VPN allows the user to hide their IP addresses from unwanted people, like say for example advertisers, scammers, hackers, and even the government if applicable. Hiding your IP address is not illegal, just in case you were wondering. In fact, your IP address is automatically assigned to you by your internet service provider, like Verizon, AT&T, Comcast, or Spectrum just to name a few. Your IP address tends to showcase your direct location, whether if you're at home, at work, or on the road, depending on which devices you are using at that time. And in most cases, the majority of people have no idea that their every move is being tracked, not only by their internet service provider, but anyone else that decides to take a peek at your activity for whatever reason. The best thing about having a VPN service is that you can stay anonymous for as long as you own the service. Because a VPN service will literally hide your native IP address that was automatically assigned to you from being revealed to anyone anywhere on the internet by assigning you a totally different IP address that will resemble as if you are located in, say, another part of the world, for example. You do not have to have something to hide in order to have a reason to have a VPN. And you do not need to buy more equipment or switch to another internet service provider to own a VPN. There are plenty of VPN providers out there that you can choose from. Simply search for VPN providers on the internet, take a look at what they offer, make price comparisons, and be sure to look at their reviews, then make the best choice for you. So in conclusion, no stranger should be allowed to do what they want to do with your privacy. And the way today's society is now, privacy is becoming even more obsolete due to those who are not cognizant of what to do in order to protect themselves from being monitored, tracked, blocked, and even identified. But now that you know all of this, what are you going to do about it? Or to your testimony in opposition to the legislation. You have five minutes, ma'am, please proceed. And committee members, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. I'm Sharon Goldberg. I'm an internal medicine physician. I've practiced medicine for 21 years, and my background is mostly academic, internal medicine, hospital-based, clinical research, and medical education. Um, I am going to skip many of the things I wanted to say because I didn't realize it was only five minutes. Wireless radiation has biological effects, period. This is no longer a subject for debate when you look at PubMed and the peer-reviewed literature. These effects are seen in all life forms, plants, animals, insects, microbes. In humans, we have clear evidence of cancer now. There is no question. Um, we have evidence of DNA damage, cardiomyopathy, which is the precursor of congestive heart failure, neuropsychiatric effects. So 5G is not a conversation about whether or not these biological effects exist. They clearly do. 5G is a conversation about unsustainable healthcare expenditures. Why do I say this? We've been sitting on the evidence for EMR and chronic disease for decades. Um, and now we are seeing all these epidemics appearing. So diabetes is the first epidemic. I think most of you know the statistics. They're very scary. One in three American children will become diabetic in their lifetime, and if they're Hispanic females, the number is one in two. So what does this have to do with wireless radiation? 
Wireless radiation and other electromagnetic fields, such as magnetic fields and dirty electricity, have been clearly associated with elevated blood sugar and diabetes. That is what the peer-reviewed literature says. It is not opinion. The closer you live to a cell tower, the higher your blood glucose. That is based on hemoglobin A1C measurements. So the idea with small cells of putting the cells closer to people's homes and bedrooms scientifically is very dangerous. And from an economic perspective, it's dangerous. And you may not know this. I was shocked to find this out. But the way you create a, a model of diabetes in rats in the lab is by exposing them to 2.4 gigahertz. And this is not for long-term exposure. Um, so. I don't have time to talk about the costs, but the huge problem with diabetes really is chronic kidney disease. Um, End-stage renal disease, the worst complication of diabetes, leads to hemodialysis. Hemodialysis is an automatic qualification for Medicare. Um, and if you don't qualify for Medicare, we still have to dialyze the patient. And the state ends up paying in many different instances. So, Renal failure is 1% of Medicare, but it takes up 7% of all Medicare expenditures. Uh, I don't have time to talk about this anymore, but once again, we have, so the other epidemics that clearly link from the science with electromagnetic radiation are related to mental health. And this is, this is straight from PubMed. This isn't my opinion, this is science, Dr. okay? Cooper, Dr. Cooper, mm -hmm. for those of us who aren't physicians, what is PubMed? I'm sorry. It's just the, the, it's our National Library of Medicine. This is where you would go. This is just the peer-reviewed literature. So we have three epidemics that clearly, they're essentially one epidemic. We have deterioration of mental health in the United States. And if you look really at the science, what does it show? And these epidemics are our suicide epidemic, um, epidemics in violent, so shootings, and the opioid epidemic. And I don't have five minutes is not the time to talk about this. This is in the peer-reviewed literature. I have a file to submit for the record. But these are facts. These aren't, and these are things that have just been glossed over by the wireless industry. And I, I really don't have time to talk about them in five minutes. I wish I did. Um, but we need to examine our epidemics in the context of our EMF exposures. What does that mean? That means that the CDC tracking these epidemics needs to, we need to start measuring how much radiation are people being exposed to and before we roll out 5G. And this means there are four kinds of electromagnetic fields that we know are harmful to human health. So radio frequency radiation, magnetic fields, dirty electricity, and electric fields, okay? Our exposure, any given person, and all humans are affected by EMFs. Our given exposure has nothing to do with the research that, that my colleagues are going to cite with the National Toxicology Program. That is an assessment of the risk of one cell phone in the near field, okay? What is our exposure in a, in a day? It's not one cell phone. It's cell phones, it's multiple wireless networks, it's smart meters, it's cell towers. It's this sandwich and it all adds up. And this is a, this is a serious problem for occupational health, public safety, and personal safety. And I feel that it's irresponsible to be even talking about the internet of things and rolling out a new untested technology when we're not even measuring what are our current exposures from the current networks. From the current networks. From the current this is my work ID. I work for Well Cornell Medicine on 68th in York. I do comparative pathology research. We deal with biohazardous materials and radiation particles. We inject animals like rhesus monkeys, rats, and mice with diseases and radioactive agents. Two weeks ago when I went to work, I noticed the security guards were in Tyvek hazmat suits and they were armed, which is not normal but I didn't pay it any mind. I go upstairs to work, I clock in. My boss is like, yo, listen, you're not needed, but we need you to surrender your Geiger counter. My Geiger counter was attached to my ID because we deal with radiation emissions in my department on the seventh floor, which is the only department that deals with radiation. But they wanted me to surrender my Geiger counter. When I left work, 
The only people that were left in my building's facility were the scientists, the professors, the researchers, and security guards that were armed. It's not the system of getting people sick. It's 5G network from the radiation. And the reason why they have me surrender my Geiger counter is so if I'm in a proximity of people that have 5G networks, my Geiger counter is going to detect that I'm in a proximity of radiation. That's what's getting people sick. That's what's getting people um, with respiratory issues. That's why some people are dying. Now, my homie works for Verizon. He got a message via email from corporate instructing him and his 100-man crew to pump 5G network cables throughout the tri-state area, whether buildings or houses were abandoned or not. The letter said, if your crew gets sick, we'll send them home and you keep on working. Don't worry. When they say that the oil is short, you'll be first dibs to get the oil. Mm, the oil you to care. Exactly. Mm. I'm Dr. Deborah Davis, and I'm here to talk with you today about the 5G uh, that Environmental Health Trust is quite concerned about. This is a network that's being rolled out all over the country that will involve thousands of antennas. I love my devices as much as anyone else, but I don't want to put the health of my grandchildren at risk. I don't want to put them in harm's way. And it, we now know that the skin, our largest organ, does respond to 5G. And in fact, we have in our sweat ducts, they can act as antennas that can receive signals. Now, this has not been tested for safety. The fact that it can interact with our sweat ducts may have much more profound meanings for our overall health and well-being. The idea that we're going to saturate this country with a network that has never been tested is appalling. And I am joining with many other scientists from around the world now to express concerns and to say we must evaluate these things before we roll out the technology. No matter how attractive it is for us to have faster downloads of video games or virtual reality, the question we have to ask ourselves, is it worth endangering the health of our children to do that? To do that? Join the Royal Navy uh, in 1960 and I specialized in microwave warfare. Uh, radar, obviously, which uses microwave. But they don't just teach you radar, they teach you all about microwaves and other uses. So I understood about microwave warfare and how it can damage people, how it can harm people. Uh, and when I finished with the Royal Navy, uh, I was also a diver in the Royal Navy um, and microwaves are used in underwater mines as uh, booby traps. Uh, you can, which actually got me interested because I, I was actually taking a lot of pieces underwater and it was too complicated uh, and I brought it to the surface and my partner that was on the surface said don't be an idiot, take it back down. He said, if somebody's beaming you with microwaves, they'll go right through you and as you open the casing, trigger a photoelectric cell and it'll blow all of us up. And, they, and he said, if it doesn't go through to the mall, it'll aim it at your head and make you make a mistake. And that's really got me interested from that point because I thought, well, how can microwaves going into your brain make you make a mistake? Um, and I, I asked a lot of questions. I have a very curious brain. And the forces, they're very good at explaining things and telling you things. Uh, so I did that and, and I, I also did a medical course while I was in to help me understand everything. And when I left, uh, a small part of my job was to question captured agents, spies, because microwaves then were used as weapons, as they are today. It is a perfect stealth weapon. And when governments don't like a group of people, for instance, the, the ladies who protest at Greenham Common in England about the American missile base they camped, they were microwaved. We microwaved Catholics in Northern Ireland to make them sick. Uh, it, it goes on all over the world and it, it's a weapon that you don't know you're being targeted because the dose is very very low which is actually more dangerous 
than a high dose. It's very, very low and it may take a year or two, but you can, you can cause neurological damage and cancers with low level microwaves and you can make all your opponents sick. It, it's a perfect weapon for a government. If you are dealing with a zero that can be killed in 80 degree weather, that means it's weak. So, no. It's not killing people. It's the 5G radiation that they're pumping out, number one, through your phone, number two, through these cell towers that they're installing right now as you're at home in your, in your cozy house. Number three, you wouldn't need a mandatory um, curfew unless you were doing something illegal to the people who didn't know. Okay? Yeah. So while you're at home from on mandatory lockdown from 9 to 5, that's when they're installing 5G that does not need to go up because it's going to fry your brain. Okay? It's going to fry your insides. It's going to scramble you. It's going to give you cancer. It's going to give you leukemia. It's going to give you flu-like symptoms so bad that it's gonna, you're going to think you have... It's a perfect weapon for a government. Uh, to you. So that was going on and, and I gathered all the information about that from people who were captured from other countries uh, to find out what technologies they had, what pulse frequencies they used. But as I said, it was only a small part of my work, but because I was highly trained in it and I was useful, uh, it, it just became a part of my working structure along with master criminals and some all sorts of people that I found incredibly interesting actually to talk to. Very, very interesting. And then when I left there, uh, I, I took a job teaching and I taught advanced level physics and I specialized in nuclear and atomic radiation and again microwaves. <clears throat> and I've just always been in microwaves and then it was a doctor uh, I, I went to see a doctor once, as most teachers do, uh, with a, a sore throat. And he, he said, as most doctors do, it's viral, there's nothing I can do for you. And, and I was leaving. And he said, hang on, Barry, he said. Uh, he said, you're a physicist. And I said, yeah. And he said, can you explain something? He said, I went to a house that had a cot death five years ago. And the family moved, and a new family moved in. They had a new baby. The cot was in exactly the same place, and there was another cot death. And he said, five years apart, and he said, there's a transmitter the other side of the child's bedroom wall. Could the transmitter cause the cot death? And I said, I don't know. I said, but I'll look into it. And then I found that microwaves were involved and I knew what microwaves did. And a while later, I went back to the doctor. I wrote a paper on it and I said, there's your answer. Microwaves can cause cot death by two or three different mechanisms. Um, there's your answer. Um, and then uh, for some reason, he told somebody who told somebody and people started phoning me up and writing to me saying can you explain this or can you help with that uh, i've never actually asked anyone if i can do anything they always come to me and then the police came to me and said we're getting this new tetra airwave system we don't understand uh, what's happening can you read all this scientific rubbish and just put it into janet and john and tell us, and I said, of course I can. Uh, so that was published, and, and since then it, it, it's, it, it's snowballed and snowballed and snowballed, and now I receive up to a thousand communiques a week from various countries, various people, and uh, I, I can't handle it. I can't handle it. I, I can't handle it. What are you guys doing here? Putting a fiber optic. What is it for? Old school. For what though? Just internet. For what kind of internet? E-Tex. Does that have anything to do with 5G? Yes. So they're installing 5G here at this school? 
Do you know why they're doing it while all the parents are at home and nobody knows what's going on? Well, this actually started since uh, December last year. Mm -hmm. And this has nothing to do with what's going on or none of that. Okay, so, so it's not it's not being done behind our backs? No. Do you know that 5G is going to be very harmful for children and that cancer is going to skyrocket? No. What you're doing is going to harm a lot of children. I hope not. I mean, I'm just a contractor for Liam, so... I know. A lot of us parents are very, very concerned. I think anyone who puts Wi-Fi into a school should be locked up for the rest of their life. I really do. I think they're not fit to walk on the surface of this planet because they haven't looked at the research and whatever incentive they have, it is not worth the genetic problems that parents are going to face with their children when they're born. And if you think of a single parent, a mother, who has a genetically deformed child, that that particular mother, mother will feel guilty because she gave birth. She will feel guilty and she will be worried every single second of every single day for her life. She will worry that the child won't marry. If the child can marry, she'll worry that the children will carry the disease, which they will. She will worry when she dies who will take care of them. So you are condemning both the family and the children uh, to a lifetime of absolute hell. This noise you hear here is the screeching sound a Mooresville family has been hearing around the clock for several days now. The noise coming from a cell phone tower right behind their house. Tonight, RTV6's Nicole Griffin is finding out what was causing it and learning now that it has stopped, the family has new concerns. For four days, a family living here in Mooresville has heard a loud screeching sound coming from the equipment right here surrounding this cell phone tower. Now tonight, after doing research about living so close to the tower, they're concerned about their health and safety. After a few hours, it just wasn't stopping and I could I could hear it all the way to my back door. Uh, I called the police and I told them uh, that uh, there's just a, a strange alarm sound and it was just a uh, nerve wracking. Will Adamson is feeling uneasy after days of listening to this sound coming from the Verizon cell phone tower behind his house. After calling police and Verizon technicians, the sound stopped Tuesday afternoon. We asked Verizon what was going on. A spokesperson says there was a false alarm coming from the generator that supports the cell site. The issue was fixed Tuesday morning and Verizon says it's going to rewire the generator in order to avoid the issue in the future. It might be quiet right now, but what was making the noise and, and what kind of frequencies are, are shooting out from this thing, um, you know, makes me wonder if it, if it could be dangerous. It's just a little concerning with, you know, kids in the house. Hey, how you doing, sir? Uh, how you doing? Good, good. What you guys doing up there? Uh, cellular work. Cellular work. Is that what those things are for? Yeah, cell antennas. Man, I've been seeing so many of them pop up all around town. Oh, uh, yeah? Like every quarter mile. Yep. It's ridiculous. How many of them do we need? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they, they reach every, like, you know, I mean, they bounce off each one, so, you know, every three miles or something, I guess. Every three miles? There's one right there in front of Safeway, look. Yeah, it's probably I could, another I could throw, carrier. I could throw a rock at it. Yeah. So close. <laughs> That's probably another carrier. Are you guys? Are you guys gonna? But if you need them every three miles, yeah, you don't what? need them every three miles. They spread them out like that over there. It's probably a T-Mobile or something. This is AT and T. So mm -hmm. everyone, you know, every so. Are time. you guys? Are you guys gonna camouflage that one? No. Like make it look like a palm tree, like a tree. church yeah. steeple, clock tower. No. No, because I've seen a lot of those too. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why do you guys? Or who camouflages them, and why? Oh, uh, we do it. We camouflage. It depends on like you know, in a higher, richer areas, uh -huh. or whatever. You know, they don't, mm. they say it's an eyesore. So mm. I don't know. It looks more of an eyesore to me when it's a tree myself. Yeah. But. <laughs> you know what's really strange about those things is that uh, 
Well, aside from the fact that there's a notice on the bottom saying that the radiation they emit or the yeah, frequency the RF, they emit, RF the, the RF frequency they admit yeah. is um, exceeds the the limits yeah, uh, for for population exposure. Yeah. So that's kind of upsetting. Yeah. And. Um, also, something very uh, quite that I find quite disturbing and alarming is that a fa is that the fact that uh, you go to uh, my, I think it's called antennalocator.com, yeah, which is uh, to, you know you're able where to, all of them are exactly it shows where all these uh, Gwen towers are at, and then um, it shows you like say one through sixteen or whatever like the number of panels that are on it, and only like the first two or three panels. It will show you know what company or corporation owns them, what they're emitting, what they're used for, the address, even a phone number yeah. to call if you're concerned. Yeah. And then from like number three through sixteen, there's absolutely no information. It says private, private, uh, yeah. information not available, um, owner not owners not listed, not listed, not available to public, yeah. and there's absolutely no number you can call. And there's, it seems apparently that even you guys that are putting them up don't know who some of these panels belong to or what they're actually doing. Yeah, no, yeah, I know. Like, I've been doing this for like 10 years and down yeah. the road. I don't know. We haven't had no side effects yet, but yeah, it says, you know, you're supposed to stay like, you know, most of it emits from the front. You know, we got RF monitors and stuff. Oh, is we, that right? We have up there, but I mean, yeah, usually mm -hmm. three to six feet, you know, you don't. I don't know. You can sit in front of them all day. It's the microwaves that are more that are more concerning. I think. Are, is there microwaves coming out of there too? No microwaves. The microwaves are like you, you see them sometimes on other bigger towers. They're big round circles. Oh, I've seen those. They're kind of like they, drums. Yeah. They have like you, a thunderbolt you, you, on them sometimes. You, yeah. You don't want to be in front of those. The, so that, you, they'll cook you like a microwave from inside. So out. I mean, what do you mean front. when you say in front? You mean like directly in, in front, front or living yeah. in the area? No, or like directly, like, say like if you're working up there, if you're like, like a few feet. Yeah. Yeah. It'll like boil hmm. your blood from inside out. That's pretty scary. Sounds like kind of like what a. And I, these, you can get sick from these too if you're in front of them a long time. You'll like if you have a say a metal or a, what is it? A fillings. fillings in your teeth. You'll start tasting metal. metal. Plates. Wow. You'll start tasting metal in your mouth. That's kind of creepy. That's you'll scary. You'll start getting sick to your stomach, maybe. Mm. You know, so you get away, get out from in front of them. Yeah. You know? We well, get this. Wireless companies in the U.S. say they'll have to install about 300,000 new antennas for the rollout of 5G. That is roughly equal to the total number of cell phone towers built over the past three decades. The faster network could create new potential for work and play, but it's also leading to new concerns. 5G requires the installation of new equipment across the U.S. So this pole here is 5G. This is the future right here. You got it. Every wireless company is working to build its own 5G network. Melissa Arnoldi leads AT&T's efforts. If you don't already have one of these in your neighborhood, yep. They're coming. That's absolutely right. They're coming. She says 5G uses high frequency waves that support faster speeds, but don't travel as far as current wireless frequencies. So instead of relying on large cell phone towers spread far apart, they need small cell sites that are much closer together. We're going to use our existing infrastructure today, whether it's light poles, whether it's street lights. We're going to make sure that we don't make it obtrusive to our customers and to the citizens. Yet some don't share the enthusiasm. The cell towers are called small cell towers, but they're not so small when they're in your front yard. Donna Barron is protesting plans to convert light poles in her Montgomery County, Maryland neighborhood into small cell sites. This will cause cancer. She was one of several people who raised health concerns at a government hearing last month. This stuff is untested on kids. Their safety is not certain. These untested technologies are, at this time, not ready to be unleashed into our lives. Cell phone equipment emits radiation, but research on its health effects has been inconsistent. According to the National Cancer Institute, a limited number of studies have shown some evidence of statistical association of cell phone use and brain tumor risks. But most studies have found no association. If you lose this fight and a pole goes in right here, are you going to move? Um, possibly. Either way, Barron says she fears property values could plummet when 5G equipment pops up. If a tower goes up right there, what's going to happen to the value of that home? It could drop 20 percent. And not only for this house. Right, for that house, that house, that house. And then pretty soon you go around the curve and there's another cell tower. They're all through this neighborhood, so it's going to devastate the neighborhood. Arnoldi insists her workers are focused on safety, pointing out they live and work near this equipment, too. Do you have any 5G antennae in your neighborhood yet? 
No, not yet. I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. It's coming soon, though. It's coming soon. So I'm guessing from that reaction, then you're you're very comfortable with it rolling out in your a neck of the woods. Absolutely. A absolutely. We are joining scientific researchers in 41 other countries, including the U.S. and the U.K., who are warning that 5G is going to pose a massive public health risk. It's not been made clear to the public that 5G won't just be another number and letter on your cell phone. It requires an entirely new infrastructure of thousands of small cellular antennas to be erected throughout cities where it's going to be installed. But so far, the only public discourse on 5G has, has, has been whether we should let a Chinese company install it or not. And millions of people are going to be exposed to a new type of radiation called millimeter waves. These are an integral part of the 5G technology. This will bring with it an additional layer of microwave exposure. There will be thousands of new antennas installed. Small cell antennas could be placed as close as every third hydro pole. And local planning authorities and people who live in these areas will have absolutely no say regarding their deployment. What the telecom industry has not mentioned in all of the advertising about 5G is they, these are new frequencies that have been never tested for their long-term biological and health effects. Millimeter waves are currently being used in airport scanners and by the U.S. military as a form of crowd control. The name of that system is called the Active Denial System. At high intensities, these waves cause intense heat and pain since wet glands on the surface of our skin act like miniature antennas. At lower frequencies, scientists are predicting damage to eyes, loss of insect populations which are already declining, antibiotic resistance in bacteria and physiological effects on the nervous system and on the immune system. When I was younger and researching acid rain, there was very little microwave uh, exposure except near airports and near radar installations because there is no natural generation of it on Earth and what comes from outer space is weak. Levels of microwave radiation today are trillions of times higher than they were even 50 years ago. 5G transmitters will radiate 24 hours a day and so close to homes it will be difficult if not impossible to avoid constant exposure. And this is in addition to what we are already exposed to with cell phones, tablets, Wi-Fi, video games, smart meters and an increasing number of smart appliances in our homes. Deployment of 5G is particularly disturbing to those who have already developed sensitivity to electromagnetic magnetic pollution. The major symptoms include insomnia, chronic fatigue, chronic pain, mood disorders, poor short-term memory, difficulty concentrating, depression, heart palpitations that are interpreted as anxiety. Symptoms also include skin problems, dizziness, nose, nosebleeds, elevated blood sugar, and in extreme cases, loss of consciousness. Microwave frequencies are also shown in scientific studies to contribute to cancer and to damage sperm. Scientists and medical doctors across the United States and in the United Kingdom are requesting delayed deployment until testing can be conducted on the long-term biological effects of 5G technology. The scientific debate about the health effects of microwave radiation is over. Microwave radiation at levels to which we are currently exposed is adversely affecting human health. Of that, there is no doubt. We need to know the true costs of 5G before we can assess its potential benefit. ...about 5G technology, and city councillors over in Carmel are now asking lawmakers to suspend it. They're planning to vote on a resolution tonight. Fox 59's Kelly Rinke spoke with people today who think more research still needs to be done. It's so small, you may not even notice it when driving by. A cell tower that nearly blends in with this light pole, but some in Carmel want you to pay attention to it. I have noticed them literally in front of other houses. And that's when I, you know, kind of my heart starts racing. Gail Thomas, a mom of two, says she's noticed more cell phone towers popping up in Carmel. And what she read about them online has her asking the city to slow down and do some research. I noticed there was a kind of a variety of articles on health and safety concerns, and that was very new to me. Thomas wants to know if the new towers for 5G technology will impact her family's health. She even spoke in front of the city council about it. To ensure they adhere to the current standards. After feedback from other groups too, council members are now considering a resolution about the 5G technology. If it is a threat, 
we need to make sure that there are ways to ameliorate uh, the problems that are caused by small cell towers. Ronald Carter, one of the authors, says it calls on state lawmakers to study the effects of 5G technology. It also asks the federal government to limit its deployment in Indiana until scientific evidence conclusively establishes that it poses no threat to humans. And it's appropriate for them to pause and to study this and to make sure that uh, we know both sides of the issue well. I feel very hopeful um, that the council is, you know, making this this move. In Carmel, I'm Kelly Rinke, Fox 59 News. The council will be voting on the resolution at their meeting tonight. We reached out to Verizon and AT&T. They referred us to a national group that represents this industry, which has said radio, radio frequency energy from wireless networks has not been shown to cause health problems. Over the past 15 years at our provincial environmental health clinic, we have been assessing an increasing number of vulnerable patients and those who suffer from the adverse effects brought on by electromagnetic exposures, most commonly to non-ionizing radio frequency radiation. These sources include cell phones, Wi-Fi, an increasing number of wireless radiation emitting consumer devices and cellular communication towers. More and more doctors are becoming aware of this condition as demonstrated by the rise in the number of referrals. The most prevalent symptoms include headache, fatigue, decreased ability to concentrate, tinnitus, irritability, and insomnia. Impacts on the heart and the nervous system are also of great concern. Because of these symptoms, some people have to have been forced to quit their jobs or have had to take time off work or experienced reduced productivity. At the Environmental Health Clinic, we help them to identify the cause of their symptoms and educate them in order to minimize exposures and therefore recover, recover more readily. We see people from all walks of life, including teachers, students, government workers, and business people. We are concerned that the upcoming introduction of 5G will significantly increase the proximity and extent of exposure to microwave radiation in Ontarians. We predict that the number of people who develop the symptoms I just mentioned will rise in the places where 5G is first installed. Uh, we are approaching two cell phone towers uh, within uh, 20 feet of one another that are disguised as palm trees. It is on the corner of Sunflower and Arrow Highway. And uh, we are approaching them now. We have our EMF analyzer turned on. You're going to start hearing the pulsations coming from these towers now. There they are. And the towers are right here to my left. They are monster towers disguised stealthily. Oh. They're behind a Jiffy loop here. Again, it's on the corner of Sunflower and Arrow Highway in Covina, and everyone that stops here at this signal is being absolutely irradiated with microwave frequencies. There's also another um, stealthfully disguised palm tree right across the street behind this Shell gas station in a shopping mall. So there are three massive towers uh, within a short distance of one another. And the uh, pulsations of radiation and the location of these towers are going to take out all of the inhabitants that work here at these businesses, as well as the adjacent townhome project that is right uh, behind the two cell phone towers that are located within about 20 feet apart. We're getting ready to make the turn now, and this will illustrate uh, how the frequencies will be heard again on our frequency analyzer. And you can see both of the cell phone towers right now. These are being deployed all over the nation. This is a silent weapons, quiet wars system using frequencies instead of bullets. Make absolutely no mistake. The intention of a silent weapons system is to reduce the vitality of the people and to uh, make the people ill. 
and many of the uh, associated illnesses that people have been complaining about and have been experiencing from the smart meters is exactly what people are feeling from the cell phone towers. This is a wireless dog fence around our nation. These cell phone towers are along all freeways. They're um, on roads. Everywhere you go, you need to go to antennasearch.com and you can uh, pull up the cell phone towers nearest your homes in your communities. These are weaponized. Go to stopthecrime.net and read the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars document. It's only 44 pages. It was a document that was uh, adopted in 1954 by the Bilderbergs at their first meeting in the Netherlands. And it is a declaration of war upon the civilian population. And when you go to the definition of the quiet weapons system, and you read about the intention to use a biological weapons system on us, you will see frequencies are part of this system. The frequencies are also part of the ultimate plan for mind control. Go to stopthecrime.net to the mind control link and understand exactly what the NSA facility is really going to do. That is that one million square foot data collection center in Bluffdale, Utah. And there are other centers as well. You need to understand the silent weapon system that has been deployed on all of us. We're passing these towers again right now. And we're forced to stop here at a red light where we are being radiated by these towers. And I can tell you that this is intentional. They know exactly what they're doing. And also uh, where you would normally be able to see the San Bernardino mountain range directly ahead of us right now, you can only see the low-lying foothills directly ahead of us. The mountain range is completely obscured from our vision because of the heavy chem trailing that we have observed here uh, on August the 1st in San Dimas and in Covina. Another extremely important thing that I must get out to everybody in the country. What is happening right now in all of our planning departments is they are agreeing to a climate action plan and an energy action plan. And this is requiring all smart meters to be deployed and for all homes to have energy efficient appliances. The opt out that many people worked very hard to accomplish in California and other locations as well is an appeasement only. It is only an appeasement. We are going to be required to have uh, smart meters and smart appliances. This is in all of the energy efficient plans. This has been stealthily brought into our cities through the back door, and that is through the planning departments. On July the 31st of 2013, we went to San Marino, which is adjacent to Pasadena, which is also the home of Caltech and uh, JPL, AKA NASA, and we picked up the climate action plan, or as they call it there in San Marino, the energy uh, efficiency plan. And we also went to Covina uh, nearby and picked up their energy efficiency plan, as well as San Gabriel. And we looked online at the energy efficiency plan of Pasadena. The people behind this plan are the international bankers, NASA, uh, Goldman Sachs, the CIA, the FBI, the Department of Energy, as well as many major universities, uh, along with the, the military, because this is a military deployment of frequencies up on all of us. Go to the NASA war plan on stopthecrime.net and you will see that they are using 
um, frequencies, uh, to low pulse frequencies, as indicated in the Army document, the Fort Meade Army document. We have that on our website on stopthecrime.net under source documents. We also have um, smartmetersmurder.com. You can link to that from stopthecrime.net. Uh, and you can listen to Dr. Barry, or I should say scientist, Barry Trower, uh, YouTube, in his discussion about the weaponized deployment and locations of the cell phone towers. It is absolutely urgent that everyone refuse the smart meters on your homes. Do whatever it takes. Do not allow a biohazard on your home. We learned when we looked at the uh, energy action plan yesterday that it is being financed by our utility company here in Southern California, which is Southern California Edison, under the auspices of the California Public Utility Commission. They're all in bed. They're all lined up. They're all corporate agencies under the mother corporation of USA Inc. The United States has been taken by foreign banks and mega corporations posing as a legitimate government, and it is not. We are being absolutely put upon by the silent weapon system. This is extremely, extremely urgent that everyone get this out. We'll be putting this up on as quickly as we possibly can to get this out to everyone. But I want um, the camera to scan across the sky right now. We're under a very, very thick, thick vellum of, uh, of geoengineering. This has been um, said in the NASA documents to have reduced uh, sunlight by 20% globally. This is why our trees are dying all over the globe. This is also preparing toxic soil because of the pH change that will only uh, allow for GMO seeds, Monsanto seeds, to grow. We are being poisoned intentionally. This is mass pollution being created. This report, we're going by another cell phone tower. We just picked it up on our analyzer. We just heard it. While we can't see it because it's disguised, we hear it. We keep our analyzer on as we're driving so that we can hear uh, how close these uh, cell phone towers are located. But they're disguised as trees. They're disguised as uh, telephone poles with a flag on it. They're even in uh, mobile gas station signs hidden so that you don't even know that they are there. In church steeples, uh, they're even created as yuccas in the desert, so you don't realize that they're not a real cactus, but that they are yuccas. This is a stealth deployment. So I urge everybody, go to your building departments and find out the additional back door, just as they have back doors in all of the computer applications. They have back doors into everything. This has been a well thought out, well organized collapse of the United States and we're witnessing it at uh, mock speed now. I'm just here to make you think. Thank you.